Guys, look at this. This is what we're building today. It is a Bitcoin Lightning Network node powered by Raspy Blitz, uh, the awesome GitHub project that makes this just so easy. But the best part is look at this case. Look at this sexy 3D printed case. Thanks to the guys at Crypto Cloaks for tossing us one of these. Been waiting to put one of these together. Let's get to it. Okay, first things first, guys. Here is a hardware parts list. Now, there is going to be a link in the description with an article that's going to have Amazon links for all these parts so you can get the exact uh, part that I got. I wouldn't deviate too much from the list or you might not get the desired results. Uh, you're obviously going to need a Raspberry Pi 4. There is a 4 gig and a 2 gig model. I would definitely get the 4 gig model. You're going to want enough uh, power for this unit to be running for several years. Uh, get the CryptoCloaks.com Lightning Shell Case. Can't recommend it enough. 60 bucks, definitely worth it. You're gonna need a one terabyte Samsung USB SSD drive to hold the blockchain. Now currently the Bitcoin blockchain is around 300 gigabytes, but um, with a one terabyte drive, you're gonna have some longevity out of this box, probably five years, I would say. So uh, get that. You're gonna need a Raspberry Pi 4 power supply switch. I got a cool one with a, with a little switch, so uh, I thought that was a, a nice little touch. Raspberry Pi 4 shim fan. You're going to need this because otherwise Raspberry Pi 4s are kind of known to overheat. So you definitely want to get a fan. You're going to need the LCD display. Uh, the official Raspberry Pi 4 when it was like 20 bucks. 32 gig micro SD card. You're going to need one of those. Don't forget a LAN cable. And don't forget you're going to need a hex wrench with sizes 2.5 and 3. That's specifically for the CryptoCloaks.com lightning shell case. Why would you want to even run a Lightning Network node to begin with? Honestly, it's a really convoluted subject and you owe it to yourself to actually do some Googling. What is a Lightning Network node? Watch some of the videos and it's going to explain it so much better than I can. But essentially running a node that's running a full Bitcoin daemon with a full copy of the blockchain is sort of like participating in the BitTorrent network by seeding torrents. If you believe in Bitcoin, you hold Bitcoin. It's something that you should do or could do to support the network. It's going to be really a, an important part of your reasoning for wanting to do it. But a Lightning Network node is even different than a Bitcoin, regular Bitcoin node because the Lightning Network attempts to solve the fabled scalability issue with Bitcoin, also the cost issue associated with transactions. And it's a lot more convoluted than, than I can explain in about three minutes. But essentially, it allows you to open up payment channels between party A and party B to limit the transaction cost and move these transactions off chain. So, I mean, essentially, in a nutshell, person A and person B open a multi-sig wallet between them, deposit a little bit of Bitcoin, and now they've set up a payment channel between them. That's one transaction on the, the main blockchain. Then they can do an unlimited amount of transactions between each other for no cost for as long as they want, and they're not gonna have to settle up on the main Bitcoin blockchain until they close the channel or end the contract or one of them ends the contract. So that's the way that works essentially. And basically you're just moving all of these transactions off the blockchain and you're going to increase throughput on the main Bitcoin blockchain. So it's it's really the promised scalable solution without going too deep into it. That's how it works. The other thing to sort of mention with these channels is that you can sort of see just online just from doing a little bit of research that people are sort of strategically capturing throughput on the Lightning Network right now. There's quite a lot of nodes that have been set up. You can take a look here. Um, this is just North America. But yeah, it's it's fascinating stuff and, and you'll be diving in right away with the web GUI and setting up your own payment channels. Here, have a look at this screenshot of the Ride the Lightning GUI. It's so nice. You can see your channels, your capacity, uh, your routing fees that you've earned, different various node information and balances. It's really, really nice, smooth interface. So we'll be diving in with this stuff right away, guys. Okay, guys, I'm going to let you go through the rabbit hole in the Lightning Network yourself. It's a really convoluted subject, and I just want to focus this video primarily on how to get the thing built in the cutesy little case and get all the hard software on it so that you can start playing around with it. And really, the gist of it all is this awesome project called Raspy Blitz by Rootsol. Um, it's really just an amazing little project, a set of scripts, and uh, it allows you to get your Bitcoin node set up quickly and easily. It used to be a huge pain in the ass to get these set up with Bitcoin D and the, the full copy of the blockchain and all the other stuff. So they've got it set up really nice with these little menus. Uh, once you get the whole thing going, you'll get this Ride the Lightning web UI, little web UI. 
So it's actually going to put like a web server on there so that you can do some other cool stuff. For instance, it'll put the whole thing behind Tor if you want that, because obviously you'll reveal yourself on the network. So if you're running this at home, you won't want to do it behind Tor. Um, gives you an Electrum server, which I just kind of noticed now. Uh, a BTC Pay server, which I'll cover in a second. You can even put on a, a blockchain explorer called RPC Explorer on there. There's LN Bits, LND Manage, Loop. There's a bunch of different stuff that you can do on here and they, they make it so that it's quick and easy because they kind of group it all into one package. Uh, I mentioned BTC Pay. BTC Pay is awesome. It's essentially open source software. It's a self-hosted solution to allow you to invoice your clients quick and easily. You can even sell things and invoice them in BTC, but BTC Pay is really wonderful and it makes it so that there's no middleman at all between you and the payments. Uh, you own the thing and you're running it on your you're running it on your node. You completely own the thing and it's yours and no one can kind of get in between your payments. Okay, you guys have seen the parts list. You have a good idea what you need to get started. And the reason why I suggest getting the exact uh, hardware parts that I got is because the whole thing is gonna fit inside this sexy little lightning shell case from the guys at CryptoCloaks.com. Check this baby out. It's 3D printed and it's designed to hold both the hard, the SSD and the LCD display. See this? It's got this little square for the LCD. Uh, nice little beautiful portholes like the whole thing is you can just tell it was it was designed really really well and it was a lot heavier and more sturdy than I thought it came out at 354 grams for the whole thing with cables and drive and everything in it and it, so it doesn't flop around on your desk it's got a bit of bulk to it I like that it's just a wonderful little case look at this thing even got a glow-in-the-dark version Thanks again to the guys at CryptoCloaks.com for sending us their lightning shell. 60 bucks, highly recommend it. Just kind of ties the whole project up really, really nicely. Okay guys, next we are going to actually image the micro SD card uh, with Raspberry Blitz software. So you're gonna need at least a 16 gig card I mean, I would probably recommend a 32 gig card because they're not that much more, just a few dollars more. And as you know, the Raspberry Pi 4 doesn't have any internal storage. So all of the operating system, the web server, everything is going to be running from this uh, micro SD card. So I would probably get, I mean, these 32 gig Evos are pretty cheap, but you can get a SanDisk Stream 32 gig version for not much more. It's probably a good choice here. So. Get your micro SD card ready, hook it up to your PC, and we will do the imaging next. Oh yeah, and the reason why you wanna do the imaging now and not after everything is built is because it's much easier to get the micro SD card into the Raspberry Pi as you're building it into the case. I found this out the hard way, so I ended up taking everything apart again. So do it now, trust me guys. Okay, so now we wanna put the Raspi Blitz software onto the micro SD card to go into our Pi, and they suggest you use something called Balena Etcher for that, so let's do that. Grab a copy of Blaine Etcher, I'm on Mac OS, but it's gonna look the same for Windows. Uh, go back to the Raspi Blitz software page, go down to installing the software, and you're gonna see that you can either download the image here, it's around two gigs, you can get a torrent of it, or you can build it yourself. I mean, I didn't bother with that, I just got the latest version, version 1.4, there's a link to it right there, verified that was the latest version, which it is. So grab that, you're gonna get this gzip file, pop open the gzip, you'll get this nearly eight gig file, image file, pop open Belaine Etcher, and whether you're on Mac or Windows, you'll get something like this. So make sure that you've got the .img file selected. Make sure that you are putting it to your micro SD card, which I am, and click flash. Yeah, this takes a little while, 10, no, oh, it looks like 10 minutes it says. And once it's done, it's gonna verify it. So just let that all happen. Okay guys, we got this far. In the next section, we're gonna finally be putting everything together and assembling it. So make sure you've got a nice smooth surface to work from and you've grounded yourself properly so you're not gonna be giving any shocks to the equipment and wrecking it. So no woolly sweaters or anything stupid like that. Okay guys, now we're gonna put everything together and it's pretty simple. It's a bit like a Lego project, but much easier. So let's go through all the bits you're gonna need. Obviously you're gonna need a Raspberry Pi 4, and there's a couple different models. There's a two gig and a four gig. I went with the four gig, just to kind of get some longevity out of it. So here's the Raspberry Pi 4. You're gonna need a plug power supply. 
And I got one with a cool little switch on it, just because I know it's annoying to have to plug these things in and out. Okay, you're gonna need a fan shim. This is to keep it cool. The other option is heat sinks, but honestly, go with the fan shim, because it's gonna be in this case, which I'm gonna show you in a minute. I had a project, I was already using this Pi 4 with another project, so it's got like a heat sink here, there was two here, took those off, because um, they get in the way of the fan shim. Here, have a look at the fan shim. You can see it there. We're gonna go through that in a second. Here's the the screen, the official Raspberry Pi 3.5 inch screen display. You're gonna to wanna to get one of those, they're quite cheap. And to store the blockchain, you'll need this Samsung T5 one terabyte SSD, three point, USB 3.1. This will fit perfectly inside the CryptoCloaks case, so this is the one you want. Don't get a SATA drive because I don't think that'll work for you. You need to get a USB drive. Link is in the description for all this stuff for the exact bits that I got. You're also gonna need a hex key. And that is for the best part is I got the guys at Crypto Cloaks to send me a lightning shell case. I just showed you the box in for some reason, but this is the this is it. What a beauty. I mean it's 3D printed has this cool texture kind of sheen to it and it fits every bit the hard drive fits in the bottom the ssd sorry and you can see the 3.5 inch screen is going to show on the front it's going to be great so honestly cryptocloaks.com these are the guys wonderful guys like they're just doing a great job they've, they've got a product that nobody else has and i think it's awesome so give these guys a click and let's put it together Okay, so step one is to take this uh, case apart. It has these little screws in each corner, and this is what you need the hex key for, right? So take it apart. Okay, so first step is take your lightning shell case, and it's the second layer. If you can see these four uh, motherboard holders or whatever you want to call them, and uh, they, they'll all have a screw in them. So take take each of the screws out. So that's the second layer. Beautiful. Take the power out. And it just kind of sits in there. And you can know it's the right way because the ports are gonna fit on the side there. All right, let's slot this in. This is where your hex key comes in, of course. Okay, so here's the fan shim, and the thing to notice with this is you're gonna have to plug in the power, okay? It comes totally disassembled, um, like this bit here will be apart from the fan, and what you have to do is, it's very simple. There's these screws on the bottom, you can see, hopefully you can see that. There's a screw on each side and a nut that goes on top. And the thing to keep in mind is letters on the fan should be facing up with the letters on the PCB board here, right? You can't really screw this up. The only thing that I did notice that's a caveat is you see these little, you see the little wires there and there's like a notch where the wires can sit in. I had to kind of pull mine out, otherwise it made some noise. So just an FYI on that. So that's the fan shim. So assemble that and then we're gonna connect it to the Pi, which is really simple. You see these, these little pins here. They line up with these holes on the fan shim. And it just sits right in there like that. Just push it down without being forceful. Okay, if you've done everything right, plug everything in, you got your fan shim in there, hit the switch. Oh no sound pretty quiet you'll see a red and a green led and depending on what the pi is doing whether it's booting up or sitting idle this fan's going to spin so heat, heat sensor so that's it we're ready for the next step next we'll put the ssd in and of course that goes in the very bottom part right there's this hole on the side and the hard drive is just going to sit in like this okay and the guys at crypto cloaks include these little sticky sticky things. So we're just gonna put one on each side of the hard drive here. Okay, 
pit, put the second one on. So you just gotta make sure that this port is visible on this hole. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay. Ready to roll. Okay, we're super close now, guys. Put on the second layer, which is the pie. Put the ports facing this way, right? Okay. So one thing to note at this point, though, is that you're gonna wanna put in your micro SD card now because it's gonna be really tricky to get it in later. So it goes in the bottom like this. Okay, just snaps in. Good. Okay, let's go ahead and put this together. Sure your ports are flush on the bottom, right? Screen just snaps in. Make sure it lines up properly with the pins. Good. It did take me a couple tries to get this screen lined up nicely in there once you got the top on, but not too bad. In fact, I got it just there, I think. Go ahead and put the end bits in, or the end thumb screws. One by one. It's the last satisfying step. Screw in each of these hex corners. Get them tight first. Honestly, I'm, I'm really satisfied with the like build quality of everything once it's all put together. I thought it would be a lot less heavy and more flimsy than it is. All right, so thanks again to the guys at Crypto Cloaks for sending me this case, wonderful little kit, and I couldn't be happier with it. If you do end up uh, getting one of these, there's 60 USD. Make sure to mention Leak Guy's video. And uh, yeah, I'm always seeing them putting out like interesting 3D printed stuff. So check out CryptoCloaks.com for the details on that. Here's the finished product. Ports there. Everything looks good. Like I said, heavier than I thought. Like nice and solid. Love it. Guys, thanks for watching. Give me your thumbs if this helped you. In the next video, we're gonna go through the Raspi Blitz setup itself all the way to fine tuning the fan and some other stuff, the LCD, and getting the Ride the Lightning web GUI on there. So I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys.